so hi. I wanted to thank the organizers for, for inviting me and start with the talk. So, so this is a joint work with Mikolai. And, and I wanted to talk about a single use restriction, which is a, like something like an approach that we believe should be used when doing transducers that work on infinite alphabets, so the, 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 the known model. So, but some of, the, some of this will be still like, it's still work in progress, so I will tell you exactly what, what, what results have their proofs and they are written down and what are still like in, in progress. So the, the classical mo model defined by Kaminsky and Francis for, for those infinite alphabets is just that we have a set that's countably infinite and the elements can only be compared for equality. So th this means that this one over here is just as good as this two over there, but they are just not equal. So, so we cannot say that a letter is even, for example, but we can say that first and second letter are equal, or the first and the last, last letters are, are equal. So this is a model by Kaminsky and Francis from 94. And here is like a, a very typical language over this alphabet. So the first letter appears again. And this is an equality property, so, so we're fine with that. And automaton like this has a state, which comes from a finite set of states, and a set of registers. So in this particular case of this language, the automaton will have only one register. And at the beginning, it's empty. But then we go through the world, and we can just store the, le the letters in that in that register. So now, when we want to recognize this language, we just go through the, the word and just look for the letter. So for example, here we see that one is not equal to two, so we don't do anything, just go forward. But at some point, we meet a letter that's equal to the letter that we have in our register. So we go to a, a special state that says found. We've already seen the first letter, and then we just continue with the state to the end of the word. And then at the end, if we are in the state after the last letter, then we know that we have found that everything is good. So now, the modification that, that we propose is to consider automata like this, but every read access destroys the content of this re register. So if we try to repeat this construction, we just save the letter in the, in the register, but now, at this point, we want to compare whether this free is, is equal to this one. And when we do this, we lose the free because we've compared it. So, so now we have no idea what the first letter was. And therefore, we'll have no, no idea at the end whether this word should be accepted or, or not. And like, it can be proven that there is no single-use register automata that will rec recognize this language. The first letter appears again. So, so it's a weaker model. But it's, it's not that bad because we can, f for example, do a language. There are at most three distinct letters. And, and the first idea for this language also seems to fail because we can store the, f the first letter in the first register. And then like once we know it's different, then we lose it and we have no idea of knowing what was there in the, in the first place. So we do a slightly more involved construction that will still be working with the single use restriction. And for, and for this, we need six registers. And now, like, the, the convention is that everything in one column will store the same value, just multiple copies, because n now it's important to count the values, so we might need to store multiple copies of some, of some values. And so at this point, we just check if this one is equal to this two. And it's not, so we lose one copy of this one, but then we move the ones to those, like, two registers, and we can fill those three reg registers with the value two. And then we proceed similarly with three. We just like check this one, this one, they are both unequal, so we move them forward. And then we fill this row with the three because like we have access to this three. So the, the single use restriction doesn't apply to the input letters. The input letters we can take in as many copies as we, as we want. So now we see a one, we compare it with the first three, then with, with the two, and then with the one. So now 
we move those two registers here, and since we know that this one was this one, we can fill this one here. So the invariant is that we have one value in three copies, one value in two copies, and one value in, in one copy. And we can continue like this till the very end, the very end of this word. And now here, when we lose the last two, the last copy of the two, we already know that the word is not in the language, so we don't have to remember anything more. We just remember that, that we are in a failing state, and we propagate the state to the very end of the, of the word. OK, so this, this class of languages recognized by, by, the, by this mo model already has two different characterizations, and it's orbit finite semigroups, which was introduced by Mikoa in 2013, and rigidly guarded MSO with data value comparison, which was introduced by Colcombe, Gabriel, and, and Lay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and yes, so, so then we can also prove that both one-way and two-way single-use register automata are equivalent to this. Like, we can give a translation, and it's actually a, in a paper, so, so this is not work in progress. We can show that the standard construction that would translate a two-way automaton to orbit finite semigroups is basically the good way of translating, and then we can construct for every orbit finite semigroup a one-way automaton that will, that will re recognize the same, the same language. And yes, yeah, so, so this is something we would like to point out, that, that, that in this world of languages with infinite alphabets, this, this class of languages seems to be very robust, because it admits, so remarkable, like, it's not very common for a class of languages to be, to be robust. And for example, like, if we, if we take away the single-use restriction or the rigidly guarded restriction for the MSO with tilde, then all those classes of languages will recognize a different, so will be different classes of, of languages. And now I would like to talk about like, how to apply this to make transducers with atoms, which is the work in progress part of this, of this talk. So for example, like a typical equality only transduction would be to remove the repetitions from the input. So we just want to get rid of these two, of those threes, because they, they are repeating them themselves and just to have the same word but with no repetitions. And here I will also show an example of a single-use register transducer that will do that. It's a one-way transducer. So it starts, it will have two registers and it just stores the previous value in both of the registers and then when we are in this state, we just compare whether this letter is equal to this letter. And if it is, then we don't do nothing. But if it's not, then we still have one more copy to output it. Because we also lose the copy when we output the, the copy. So like this, we go through the word, outputting only when there is a change. We also have, have to re remember to output the, the last letter after the last, after the, the end of the word. And this is basically the, the transduction that we wanted to, to achieve. So a nice pr property of this type of transducer is that it admits a Cronroads decomposition. And I would like to talk about this now. So basically, the, there is five prime five functions and every function that's recognized by a single-use register automaton one way can be expressed as the composition of those, of those functions. And I would like to go through every type of function. So basically, we can have a homomorphism between a letter to a word. So ev every function from a letter to a word will extend to a, to a function from word to word. And this homomorphism has to be equivariant, so in a sense, looking only on the equality. So, so, so it cannot be, for example, A, if the atom, like if the atom is odd or even just has to only look at the e equality. An example of a function that is a homomorphism is just doubling the letters. So we just translate one atom, like one, to one, one, two, 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 
and then this is how we can double all the letters. So another prime function is the delay function, and it can be used, for example, to do this example that we did before, so removing all, all the re repeating atoms. So, so what it does is just moves the word forward and like makes the end of word and like the beginning of word and end of word, word marks at the beginning and end. And then with the homomorphism, we can just filter out all the equal pairs. And then we just keep the top row. And that's the function. So now finite group on, on prefixes. This is basically, we have any kind of alphabet that will just stay unchanged. But on the other coordinate, we have a group. And we want to, for every prefix, we want to just change this, so the, the value, to the value of the group product on a, on a prefix. So for example, we might use it to use to do this function, remove letters from odd po positions. And we'll do this like this. Let we just add the one, which is a member of Z2 group in this particular group. And then we just apply this function. So it will change us, change like one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. And now we can just filter out all the zeros. And we get our, our input. And then the last thing, the classical cron road th theorem is the flip-flop semigroup or monoid on prefixes. And this is, uh, this is like sending one bit of information to the future. So, so basically, we have a device, and we can either set it to 1, set it to, to 0, or leave it as it, as it is. So it has three, three elements, and 1 will mean like just leave it, because it's, it's a monoid 1. A means set it to one, B means set it to zero. So slightly confusing because of the one that, that doesn't change and the A and B, so, so. That's why, and here, he, he, here are that, just written all the operations. So every time like that, it's basically the last, the last letter, unless, of course, it's, it's one, so. So we only care about the last operation that was changing the, the thing. And we can, for example, use this function to compute, remove everything after the first repetition. So we start by the delay function. And now we just map every non-repeating pair, so non-equal pair to 1, and an equal, equal pair to, to A. And then once we apply the flip-flop monoid, we get, like, after the first repetition, we, we only get, get A. So, like, in here, we didn't even have to use the, the B. But maybe we wanted to do something else. Like, in the future, this might be po po possible. And now, you can just filter out all the A values and get the output. And then, that's it. So, like, for the original Kronrod th theorem, it says that a function f is recognized by a one-way transducer, the classical model with finite alphabet, if and only if it's composition of those prime functions. So for example, remove repetitions is just this homomorphism that will filter out the, the equal pairs. And so it's an example like this. And then when we want to have the infinite alphabet case, we need one more prime function, and this is the letter propagation. So now, above, like, basically, like, operations on one re register. So we can have, we can write that down. So, OK, we have, and we sometimes will want to send a letter to the future. And, and for this, we might want to store it at some place and then output it in some other place. And we just want, so this will move this two in here. And this is also subject to a single use re restriction. So when we have seven, eight, and for example, here we also do output, then it won't have any effect because this two is 
already used and you haven't stored any, anything here. So this one won't have any effect. And this is useful to, for example, do this function, which changes the last letter to the first letter. So again, we start with the delay monoid, and this is only because to get this end of word mark. And we just add a letter like a save command here and a, a read com command here you, you, you using a finitely supported, so equivalent homomorphism. And then we just propagate this letter to the end of the word and apply another hom homomorphism to get to get what we wanted. So if we add this one letter propagation to, to Kronos t theorem, we get exactly so the class of single use one way transducers. And then we might want to add two more prime functions, which I think were mentioned by Mikowai early, earlier to today. And they also m m make sense in the classical, so finite alphabet word. And one is just iterated reverse, which reverse every block of numbers. And the other one is iterated duplicate, which will just duplicate every block of numbers. And then if we add those two, then we get a, a theorem which says that when, when we look at the two-way automata and the tr transducers, which work basically the same as one-way, but can also go back, then we get exactly the, the class of function that's done by the two-way pr prime functions. So those are those functions and those functions plus the letter propagation function, which is specific to the, to the infinite alphabets word. And now we have two corollaries, which are not e immediate from, so maybe are immediate. But so that one-way single-use register automata are closed under compositions. And this can be also pro pro proven in another way that's kind of simpler. But this two-way single-use register automata are closed under compositions for, 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 follows immediately from this cron roads decomposition. And, and we think it's, it's the easiest way to, to do it. And then we have one more corollary, which is non immediate that like mo most of those will require some of some more work but only like a little more work so it's, it's not that hard to work once you have the cron roads decomposition for two-way automata and it basically says that all of the following recognize the same class of transductions so this is the first model that recognizes all the all the then, so those are the models mentioned here. Okay. <laughs> so the, this one was by Shepardson, I think, and I don't remember which year, but I think it will appear on the on a later slide. I think some, some error. Then we have this single like string streaming single use register transducer, and this is this is nice because we have like the previous copyless restriction that was introduced to make the string streaming tran transducers equivalent with the two-way transducers. And it somehow seems to, to play very well with this single-use restriction that, that just en ensures that, that the automata recognize the same class of languages as the, as the monoids. And then the regular list, list functions introduced by, by, by Mikowai, Krishna, and, and Lorita. So, oh yes, this is Shepard's and Waddle. <coughs> yes, yes, yes. So, so sorry. Mm -hmm. So, th those. So, yeah. I, I mean, like. So, what, what I meant by original model is that the atom-free version of the, of the model, and here are just like a single, a single use extensions of, of it, so like register. So maybe not single use, but atom register of, of those functions. So that will extend those to infinite alphabets. And then I would like to finish with the general picture of the situation. So we have one class of languages of, sorry, of transductions, which are 
all those transactions. From the pre previous slide, we have this one-way transducer, which seem to co which coincide with with the prime functions and letter propagation. This is sequential functions. This is this is the e equivalent of rational functions, and this is the equivalent of regular functions. And this is what also might be very interesting to to look is how does like w whether ri rigid MSO transactions with with this tilde to compare data data values and like this is where we are not sure yet, but, but this looks. Promising. So thank you very much for, for listening.